two years ago, one of Europe's oldest and most iconic airline brands was wiped off the face of the earth. And with it, the Pope had to find a new ride. Luckily, he didn't have to wait long because the Italian government already had a succession plan in place for the bankrupt Alitalia, and that plan was named ITA Airways. ITA was Italian aviation's chance for a fresh start. We launched uh, in the middle of the pandemic. I think it's the only airline in the world which was launched in the middle of the pandemic. And even though they inherited most of Alitalia's old fleet and employees, we were promised that the new airline would be more efficient, trimming some old planes and underperforming routes while preserving the same classy Italian experience that Alitalia was known for. In my last video, I flew the pristine A330-900neo, and unsurprisingly, it felt like a totally different airline, and one with a bright future. But as you'll soon see, the Alitalia brand is far from extinct. In this video, in honor of Halloween coming up, we're gonna pay a visit to the airline cemetery and conjure the ghost of Alitalia for a sentimental ride aboard the A330-200 from New York to Rome. This is Ita Airways Flight 603 in business class. Alright, welcome to New York JFK's Terminal 1. Built in 1998, it's not the newest of terminals, and it only has 11 gates, but the theme here is quality over quantity. Home to 27 airlines representing more than 20 countries, this is one of the most diverse and exciting places to kick off an international adventure. Today's trip takes us to London Heathrow, but we're not flying direct, because that would be way too easy. Taking a long way to London. We're flying ETA through Rome, and it's gonna take us 17 hours instead of six. But that was more than cool by me, because one, this ticket was dirt cheap for business class, and two, well, I had never flown an Italian airline before and wanted to see what ETA was all about. Spoiler alert, I was blown away, but not in the ways you might expect. Alright, let's pick up our journey at the ETA check-in desks. <laughs> wow, even in the uh, sky priority line, looks like a pretty uh, pretty long line, unfortunately. Could just be an illusion, honestly. Looks like there are three or four people ahead of me. It's 4.06 p.m., I think flight board's around 5.15 or 5.20, 6.05 p.m. departure, so... We got plenty of time. Obviously, we'd love to check out the lounge, and it looks like this line is moving, so we should be should be in business. Hey, how are you? Wow. This. Are you checking the bag today? Uh, yeah, just one, please. What's the final destination? It's London. Taking a long way to London. Oh, okay. So London. Perfect. Do you have to pick it up in Rome or no? Okay. So you're using the Air France lounge at gate number one. Okay. Boarding gate is number three, so everything is in the same area. Super close, okay. Gate number three, 50540, and you are all set to go. Okay, I really appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> what a homie. She was not going to let me leave the counter without having me commit to memory where I needed to be and when. <laughs> all right, not, not the most efficient uh, bag drop process. They had one agent checking in every one, and there was a group, uh, a group of couple passengers ahead of me that checked eight bags. That one group had like five of them. Yeah, eight. Eight. Still got ourselves probably a, a good half hour if we can get through security here. They do offer pre-check, so that's what we're gonna try to do. See you on the other side of security. All right, just cleared security here at Terminal One. And geez, I'm very, very grateful that I had a combo of business class, so the priority lane and pre-check, because there was a pretty massive queue up there in security. It probably would have taken 30 minutes plus if I was in economy, so. Grateful for that. Um, we're going out to gate three today, which is like almost right next to security. And it sounded like the Air France lounge, which the ETA business class passengers get access to, is pretty close to that gate. So yeah, I already see it, so. Welcome to the Air France lounge. This is one of five lounges at Terminal One. The others being the Lufthansa lounge, Korean Air lounge, Turkish Airlines lounge, and Prime Class lounge. I always get a kick out of checking out the Google reviews for each lounge, and Air France ranks number two of the five in this very unscientific assessment. Now, first impressions are awesome. This is a beautiful bi-level space with plenty of natural light and killer apron views. But the internet had mixed opinions on the food selections. <laughs> and I'm hungry as shit, so let's head there first. Upon initial inspection, we found a pretty good variety of hot and cold options. I think it's safe to say the French love their carbs, so you'll of course find some breads, rice, potatoes, quiches, pastries, and cakes. Protein-wise, they had fish, beef, cold cuts, and cheese. On the beverage front, you've got a self-serve bar with a fairly respectable selection of coffee, soda, beer, wine, and liquor. 
complete open bar. That's uh, putting a lot of trust in the uh, hands of passengers. I hastily gathered up some green salad, as well as a garbanzo bean salad, along with Air France's rendition of the filet of fish. Then for something sweet, I snagged one of the petite little fruit salads. I definitely wanted to save some room for the onboard cuisine, so I intentionally kept things pretty simple here. Now, in terms of other amenities, uh, one, there is a shower, but only one. Two, the bathrooms are small but serviceable. Three, there's a spa offering 20 minute facials. And four, if you're in first class, don't worry, you won't be forced to mingle with all those business class plebes. Air France has a dedicated La Premier section on the second floor. In here, you'll find Laurent Perrier Champagne, not to be confused with the inferior Joseph Perrier Champagne, that served to us common folk in the main lounge area. But it didn't matter much to me as I was saving my daily alcohol allotment for on board. All right, that was a fairly brief visit to the Air France lounge. Uh, it was a lot tighter than I thought it would be, honestly. Only had about 15 minutes to just shovel up some of the buffet food, and um, it's a good thing. If we would have had more time in there, I probably would have overeaten. Um, so now I'll actually be a little bit hungry for this uh, the meal on the split. Looks like people are queuing up for boarding here at gate three. There's a long line. Boarding commenced around 5.15, just over 10 minutes late. And I must say, I've never seen this many passengers needing special assistance. There must have been eight to 10 passengers in wheelchairs which turned out to be a true test for the ground staff as they of course needed to make sure each individual was safely on board before general boarding could begin. At 520, the floodgates opened to all of us fortunate enough to not need wheelchairs. Unfortunately, this gate offered zero views of our ride for today. But as you'll soon see, she's an ex Alitalia 23-year-old Airbus A330-200 bearing the registration Echo India Delta India Papa. Utah Airways, here we come, baby. Zero clue what to expect. Cannot wait. Hi. Hello, how are you? Hi, thanks. Perfect. Do you mind if I film the seat and stuff? No, it's fine. Okay, thank you so much. Alright, here we go, people. Get ready for a blast from the past. Alitalia's Magnifica cabin. And no, these seats aren't even that old, but there's something special about them being the relic of an airline that no longer exists. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is retro. I love it, though. There are 20 of these bad boys spread across five rows in a staggered 1-2-1 configuration. The seats were manufactured by Stellia Aerospace, and then Alitalia added a couple Italian touches, like leather upholstery from the iconic luxury brand Poltrona Frau. It definitely gave me armchair leather vibes. That leather has aged well. It's like something you'd find in your grandparents' home, but you can tell it's high quality leather. Waiting for me at 2 Lima was a slew of goodies, including an amenity kit, some menus, a fully separate lotions and potions kit from QC Terme, a pair of noise-canceling headphones, a water bottle, bedding, and some slippers. While I was setting my clock to roam time, one of the lovely cabin crew came by with some pre-departure bevies. We had a choice between OJ or Prosecco, and I of course selected the latter. We're going to ship up a little bit, eh? Something to drink. We have Ferrari, Prosecco, the oranges, and water. Ferrari, Prosecco, I'll yeah. have this. Italian Prosecco. Yeah. Perfect way to start the Ita experience. Ferrari, Prosecco. I'm so clueless when it comes to alcohol, but got an indulgement on Ita. <laughs> Gotta say, that definitely hit the spot, and the perfect size pour, too. Around five minutes later, I was presented with a pre-departure hot towel. It was scorching. We got visible steam here. But luckily it cooled down quick. And I gotta say, I was impressed by the level of service so far. Around 6.20 p.m. we pushed back, the safety vid was screened, and we got a nice intro from El Capitan. <laughs> We're departing to the southwest via runway 22 right this evening, which is just about as far as you can get from Terminal 1. But that meant we'd get a nice tour de JFK, passing by pretty much every other terminal except T4 on taxiways Alpha, Bravo, and Echo.
have been getting so lucky on these sunset takeoffs lately. That one was awesome. My eyes were glued to the window pretty much until 10,000 feet as we made a climbing left turn eastbound to begin our voyage over the Atlantic. When the seatbelt sign went off, I bolted to the lavatory to make sure I didn't have to get up during the meal service. Driving back in my seat, I took the IFE and Wi-Fi for a spin, but more on that later. Let's get to the first meal service. I was presented with a tablecloth, and then everything started happening fast. Oh, yeah, it's perfect. Silverware, butter, bread, wine glass, water, salt and pepper shakers, food, and then the wine, which I believe was the Chianti. The first course was a chicken salad, and thankfully this is not the American version that's basically leftover chicken drenched in mayo. This one was literally just chicken and vegetables, which was much more in my wheelhouse. Great start to the meal. This is a chicken salad, very basic, but delicious. Honestly, if you would have asked me what the meal service has been like going to this place, I probably would have told you it'd be like, you know, the staples, lasagna, pasta, very carb heavy, but I'm really glad they're starting us off with some protein. Uh, and some fiber before this meal because you know the carbs are coming. <laughs> and come they did. Next up was the green lasagna, which ironically had way more meats than greens. Oh yeah, it's like some sort of ground beef. Delicious. Cream sauce, there's no way this is good for you. But it tastes amazing. the same principle applied to the water top offs, which I was grateful for. Here we go. The main course, the, the climax of this meal, if you will, the Pouguet style fish fillet. I was blown away by this one. Everything was fresh, tasty, and plenty of volume. All right, here we go with the fish. Delightful preparation, wow. Fish was outstanding, 12.5 out of 10. My baseline is like American Airlines. To top things off, I ordered the cheese plate, which came with some celery, carrots, grapes, and crackers. Fantastic meal, just incredible. Felt more like a restaurant on the plane. Now the only downside is that it took a while, which eats into your sleep time on these relatively short transatlantic flights. It's not going much time left for sleep, but you know, it is what it is. <laughs> but luckily I didn't have any high stakes business meetings upon arrival in Rome. Now it's time to get ready for bed. I typically like to show you guys a post meal position update on the moving map, but to be honest, I had no clue because the moving map was broken. So no in flight map. <laughs> hey, but I guess it meant less distractions. And once I brushed my teeth, I headed back, put the seat into bed mode, threw on the eye mask and was out like a light. Honestly, not a bad night's sleep. Certainly grateful to have a live flat bed. The cabin was kept at a reasonable temp, and the ride was just about as smooth as they come. Now, even though the map wasn't working, the time to destination feature was alive and well. And according to this, we had a little over an hour to go when I woke up. Breakfast was imminent, but I needed to get some blood flow to the legs, so I took a stroll to the economy cabin and back. Here you'll find 219 seats in your standard A330 layout of 242. Then there's a small but intimate premium economy cabin of just two and a half rows in the 232 layout. When I got back, I was presented with breakfast on a single tray. Pretty cute little breakfast. Just fruit, bread, little uh, Greek non-fat yogurt, which is a great selection. I love that they have that. And drink-wise, I skipped the caffeine at this point and instead went with an herbal tea called Relax, and it really hit the spot. <laughs> okay, so I did promise a seat tour, so let's hit that real quick along with the Wi-Fi and IFE situation. Then we'll follow the approach and landing into Rome. <laughs> Starting with the tray table, 
It's not the most elegant contraption, but it's highly practical, sturdy, large, and allows you to get out of the seat while deployed, which is a huge plus. Storage-wise, you've got a sizable side table, a little basket that could potentially fit an iPad, a small cubby under the armrest. Then under the footwell, there's some additional places to put a small handbag or just stash away the bedding. We've got a couple lighting options, including the overhead light as well as an adjustable reading light. And then on the climate side, I'm pleased to report that each seat has individual air vents, which you won't find on the A330neo. Now, those of you looking to keep your devices charged are in luck, but the power outlet is in a bit of an awkward spot near the floor. And I find myself constantly knocking the plug out when I left the seat. The last somewhat cool feature is the massage, which I was expecting to be pretty weak and or wimpy, but it was actually quite pleasant. It's vibrating on my upper back, but it's kind of nice. All right, onto the productivity situation. This plane is equipped with one of the most ancient Wi-Fi systems I've ever seen, and it's still Alitalia branded. There are four options ranging from two to twenty dollars and ten to twenty megabytes. On the plus side, business class passengers were given vouchers for 50 megabytes of free usage, but it was dirt slow and FlightAware took forever to load. The entertainment system was, well, entertaining. It's like one of those old touch screens that has like the double screen. Most of the features didn't work, including the camera view, moving map, live news, and connecting flight information. The only things that did work were the movies and TV shows, which is what I expect to work at a bare minimum. But as we closed in on Rome, the real entertainment was out the window. Let's follow this spectacular approach along the Italian coast, straight into runway 16 right. Just like that, here we are at gate Echo 19 at Rome Fiumicino. As we're deplaning, let's hit a quick recap of this Ita Airways flight. Now, there's no question this is an old plane, the hard product is anything but revolutionary. Ita also doesn't seem to be in a hurry to ditch the Alitalia brand, which is still prominently displayed on the outside of the plane and also on the Wi-Fi portal, headphones, glassware, and more. Though worn, the seat was lie flat and functional. And most importantly, this layout enables a good amount of privacy and bed mode no matter where you're sitting. The amenities provided were generous and the service was warm, personal, and professional. And of course, the food was top-notch. Now, of course you sacrifice some sleep time with a more drawn-out meal service, but I personally prefer the song and dance of a proper dinner, especially when sitting up front. If you can find a reasonably priced itinerary in Ita business class like I did, I'd say go for it. I just encourage you to take note of what plane you're flying on, as the Ita fleet is far from homogenous. However, I found the service and quality of food to be consistent on both long-haul flights I took, on the A330 Classic and the Neo. But that was only two data points for me, so I'm admittedly not an Italian airline expert. Have you guys flown Italy's new airline? If so, how do you think it stacks up to the other European airlines and to the old Alitalia? Let me know in the comments, and as always, thanks for taking the transatlantic hop with me today. Safe travels, and arrivederci from Rome. Definitely old school plane. But I think the moral of the story is don't judge a book by its cover.
the people were amazing. And it's just good old fashioned quality service, you know? It's just how it's done. Well, I wish I would have been on the A350, sure, but all I'll see I definitely would prefer the, that experience over the shiniest new plane, shiniest new seat, but everything else fell flat.